Good morning, everybody. Dave Walker here with the Beta SMB Institute, and um, I'm really proud to present uh, nominees in both our Brand of the Year and Hall of Fame categories for our 2020 Best to SMB Awards, and that's Verizon Business. So I'm joined today by um, Keith Gladhill, who's the VP of Integrated Market Marketing for Verizon Business, and by Mark Bryan, who is the Director of Field Marketing. Welcome, guys. Good morning. Good to have you here. Keith, why don't you give us a quick background on yourself? Um, and then, Mark, if you can give us a quick background on yourself. And um, we will, you know, kind of tee up basically what's in the portfolio of Verizon Business and then really get into how you guys do what you do so well that earned you these, these nominations from your peers. So, uh, Keith, why don't you kick off? Sounds good, David. Good morning. And first off, uh, we were just very honored to uh, be selected uh, to be the recipient of this award. Um, so small business, no big surprise at Verizon Business Group is a passion of ours. We, we obsess over the segment. And so this is something that uh, we take very seriously and we're just honored to be here. So good morning. Uh, so as Dave mentioned, I'm Keith Gladhill. Uh, I lead integrated marketing globally for Verizon Business Group. Uh, been in the industry, that being uh, wireless and uh, core connectivity business for over 27 years, uh, spanning a, a career that uh, has, has really put me in, has given me the opportunity to uh, have a lot of different customer facing opportunities and to work with a lot of uh, the, the latest and greatest technologies. So been on, uh, I like to tell people that I've been here for all five Gs. 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and if you caught our announcement last week, we just announced 5G nationwide, and I'm still here, Dave. So if that's a little something about me, I'll turn it over to Mark. Yeah, thanks, Keith. So uh, I run domestic um, small business marketing underneath Keith for field marketing uh, for the wireline and wireless and Verizon Connect sides of the business. So I've been with the company and in the, in the industry for about 15 years. Uh, so, as Keith uh, mentioned, obsessing over small, medium businesses is literally what I do every single day to be able to support our customers uh, and our field teams, uh, our channel sales teams as well. So, uh, Dave, good to be here and good to see you again. Good to see you, man. Hey, um, you know, I'm, I, let's not presume that everybody in the audience actually knows what's currently in the briefcase of um, sales reps from Verizon Business. So, Mark, why don't you take that um, and, and just kind of give us a quick overview of what the products and services are that you guys are currently selling. Yeah, absolutely. So um, when you think about your core wireless technologies, um, and I'll try to bucketize this just a little bit here. So obviously smartphones, tablets, mobile hotspots, but we also go a bit deeper in the SMB space with the product and service offering. So if you think of business continuity, so we'll jump into the solution space for a minute and not individual products the continuity of operations and how technology supports that. So you think routers, private networks, the ability to expand outside of the office from a connectivity uh, and collaboration standpoint. We also go into the IoT space, uh, or M2M. -M. So if you think about connected devices, announcement of 5G um, is going to accelerate this tremendously. And I think it's going to, um, it's going to matter more in the SMB space more than ever. And it's, it's largely been an enterprise play in the past. Uh, but I think it's something now that our uh, customers in the SMB world will be, will be able to take advantage of as we forge forward here. And then if you look on the wireline side, Dave, um, you know, you have uh, just core connectivity on the wireline side. Security is a really, really big play for us right now. Uh, and we see our customers now more than ever. Um, that, are, that are really asking for expertise around security and how we can help them there, and that's in the wireline and wireless world. Um, so if you think about just technology holistically, if it's in the bag somewhere, it probably is in the bag with us, either with us or one of our partners. So we like to think of ourselves as the single place that you can go to be able to uh, get all of your digital transformation um, needs, that we have great partners that we can engage to be able to get those, uh, those solutions into the you know, greater SMB world's hands. So, terrific recap. So, you know, with um, Keith, over to you, I, and, and you might need to lean in a bit on your microphone because I was having trouble hearing you at the opening. But I, yeah. I, with that portfolio, obviously what it represents is lots and lots of connections into your small business customers. And I, I would imagine that when the pandemic hit, there was uh, an explosion of need 
that happened on many of your small business uh, customers' part. Can you talk a little bit about what in you know what of what you offered really kind of exploded, maybe what retreated as the pandemic took shape? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So you know, it it's really um, astonishing to think back to February and think about how all of our lives were. So when you do that, it's really a, a moment of reflection. Um, when our marketing plan uh, was a demand-driven marketing plan, um, really based on uh, targeting prospects, and we our, our messaging tone was a was a what I'd call a selling tone heading into the pandemic. That's not a surprise. Uh, that that would be what you'd expect from a small business marketing uh, uh, campaign and, and organization. When we hit when pandemic hit though. Um, one, we didn't know, we didn't have some crystal ball, Dave, that others didn't have. Uh, we were reacting the same way everyone else was to try to figure out what exactly our customers were going to need. And one thing that we did right away is we put the brakes on all of our uh, selling, um, um, all the selling motion campaigns. We just felt like that type of messaging in the marketplace was not appropriate. We knew that much. That's, again, you probably saw that across a wide variety of segments. And we pivoted. Uh, to a service type uh, meth uh, campaign messaging tone. Um, what we knew is small businesses were just like us. They didn't know what they didn't know, and they needed help. They needed help in the form of thought leadership. How can we give them access to experts that would be able to help them understand how to do some of the basics, how to, uh, including, hey, if my, if my business is shuttered and I need to pivot my business model on a dime, what do I got to do right away to make sure I keep my doors open uh, when I don't have my revenue stream that I'm accustomed to? So, so creating thought leadership to really help our customers understand that was really important. The other thing we needed to do is we actually had to create opportunities that provided a direct line of sight to the opportunity to help small businesses. So, Dave, so we immediately looked for things like um, how we can connect um, – uh, our small business customers with grants where we can help them out and, and connect them back to be able to invest in new types of technology that they probably weren't thinking about. So one example is if you were a brick and mortar small business and you had a service model, you may not have been thinking about digital transformation uh, the way that you were thinking about it by the time you got to April. In that e-commerce, if that was not a priority for you pre-COVID, it for sure became a priority right away. So Mark and the team worked overtime to figure out how we positioned our e-commerce and digital transformation solutions and did it in a way that we were making, they are very simple for our small business customers to adapt them. So in summary though, I'd tell you, we went from a sell mode to a serve mode to make sure that we are there for our customers <laughs> as they went through the journey and really unbox the unknown together. So uh, TJ Fox at our last uh, our, our, our leaders forum back in July spoke about the, kind of the, the help first approach. Was that something that you were able to carry back to your agency partners, your creative teams and say, you know, in the context of this service message, we want to make sure that we are leading with a, a handout of, of assistance to small business? Yeah, there's, there's no question. One example I'll give you from the creative side is a program called Pay It Forward Live. Uh, Pay It Forward Live ran for 10 weeks, uh, attracted over 90 million viewers. And what it was all about was connecting uh, artists in the, in the marketplace that were committed to their own local small business and getting the awareness out there to get donations in the form of gift cards and other revenue producing opportunities to those small businesses. It was a very, very successful program. The other program that we connected it with was um, a grant program around an organization uh, that you may be aware of, LISC. Uh, and, and all said and done, we've done nearly 800 donations of $10,000 each to help. Now, these were uh, direct donations to small businesses that they could then turn and use for digital technology transformation. Those are just a couple examples of how we had to flip our messaging and we had to get our creative teams thinking in a different way. I mean, they're, they're used to going for a call to action, get you activated, uh, you know, bring you onto our network. It had to turn into, no, how do we offer a solution that meets a need that you now have that you didn't have two months ago? And then 
connect you in with the opportunity to have a solution um, as opposed to going for that uh, immediate uh, payoff in the call to action. Last question, and, and I think this is a big reason why you guys were nominated by your peers as, as brand of the year is because the the pivot was so demonstrative was so demonstrative. I mean, it, you guys did it across all of your communication channels and did it so quickly. But was it was it kind of a hard a hard sell inside? I mean, is it? No organization likes to back off the gas when it comes to to selling. Um, but it sounds like you guys, you know, really from the very top, were committed to the idea of, no, no, we're we're totally cool with the impact this is going to have on our revenue. We just want to make sure that our small business customers are able to survive by any means that we can offer in the form of assistance. It actually was not a hard sell. Um, our our chairman uh, oftentimes speaks about our four stakeholders. And just for a reminder for everybody, the four stakeholders that we uh, are always keeping an eye on are, of course, uh, our customers, uh, our employees, our shareholders, and number four is society. So for us, we felt like this was a moment that, frankly, we were built for. Look, um, the pandemic, unprecedented. Disaster, though, in Verizon, not unprecedented. Um, Mark can tell you stories of how he was uh, with Hurricane Michael on the front lines um, in the Southeast United States, you know, in moments of impact, forest, you know, forest fires in California. We're no stranger to uh, disaster response. Pandemic, new for all of us, but it's in our DNA. We actually talk about in our credo, we call it running to a crisis. That's what we do. So no, it wasn't a hard sell. It was really more of a unifying call to action internally to really step up and do what we can do. So, Mark, a, a question in two parts. Um, you obviously are, are, are in charge with uh, leading a very large field sales organization. Um, first of all, tell us how big that sale, sales organization is. But then, really, a question in two parts. How, what were the, the challenges of managing that field sales organization in a uh, quarantine environment, in, in, in shutdown mode? And where is it today? How, how have you really kind of evolved your field sales team to, you know, from from where they were pre-pandemic, where they were early days pandemic, where they are today. Yeah, Dave, so to, to answer the first part of your question, so the field sales teams uh, within the SMB space, we have around 3,000 representatives that are out uh, calling on customers and taking care of customers. So it's a large group of employees across the wireline wire line and wire. You know, pre-pandemic, you it's your ways of working are very well defined, and it, it goes back 30 or 40 years, which is you're calling on customers, you're going to those appointments, uh, you're meeting with customers face to face, and it's a very um, it's a very personal environment that naturally fit who we hired and why we hired them. And I think when you look at the pandemic, we quickly shifted to okay, what are my new ways of working, and then how do I enable that? So everyone's super uncomfortable out, out in the field on trying to figure out how we did the, how we do this the right way. To Keith's point, when something like a shift like this cell uh, move into a serve model, when it's supported at the enterprise level, and I'll call it the enterprise level at the highest ranks, then it flows down through the organization. I think you, you saw the sales reps in the field let their shoulders down just a little bit. And they understood that what we were getting ready to do would be supported at the highest levels. And it was not something that was just, hey, you no longer have to sell, you just have to go serve. By the way, that is the case, but we're also gonna support you in that. And when you look at how we enable technology, um, you know, Blue Jeans was a big part of that. Um, you know, making sure that our, not just our customers understood how you collaborate in this new environment, but making sure the reps understood as well. So we developed playbooks for virtual meetings as an example. The devil's mm -hmm. in the details, right? So, uh, you know, we made sure that, hey, this is how you dress. This is how you introduce to a meeting. This is how you upload videos, presentations. Uh, and we tried to standard that, standardize that as much as we could across the organization. Uh, I think I mentioned on a previous call with you, Dave, you know, making sure that the operations teams, the HR teams, the, the, co the entire marketing team, not just the field marketing team, we're all working in concert to support this effort was a big part of it as well, right? Because we tend to, in a matrix organization, it's very easy to work in silos. to say, like, I'm going to do this, marketing does that, and operations does this. But, um, you know, we quickly pulled everyone together on a cadence of calls daily for months and months and months to make sure we had this nailed down 
box functionally. Um, I think if you look at where we are today, um, it's very similar candidly uh, to where we were three or four months ago on how we're actually interacting with our customers, but we're sharper, we're much sharper. And uh, you know, our customers have actually helped us get there because they're more comfortable in this environment now. Do we all, all wanna be here long-term and doing this long-term? Of course not. I think right. we've reached a, a cadence to where we can do business and we can operate and we can communicate and we can serve our customers. They can give us feedback uh, in this environment, but it took a lot of hard work and a lot of paying attention to detail to, to get there. That's a great answer. I, I mean, I, I, I've, I've seen the evolution kind of from the outside looking in and, and uh, I think you guys are always very communications forward. You know, you're always really kind of elevating your messaging consistently to your customers, you know, to the to, to the broader population. And particularly with small business, I think all of us, um, we even talked about this at our, at our last Leaders League meeting about how, as we were talking about exemplary branding and messaging over the course of this year, you guys got called out a lot because you were very, very um, consistent in your messaging across all the different channels, but also very clear in saying, this is what we're doing. This is what we're about. This is what you can count on us for. So Keith, back to you, is it, again, with, all, with such an intimate connection into your small business customers, is it becoming clear what their, uh, what their forward-looking demands of your business are going to be? Yeah, yeah, it is. If I could just quickly touch on the previous topic to give you an example, then I'll, I'll answer that question. A great example of what Mark's talking about here is what we did with our, our small business webinar series. Um, we, in, as a marketing team, when I say this, and for all the marketers out there who are listening, they'll be like, oh, really? Uh, but it, it, is, it, is, it is a really, really significant point. We did uh, these uh, webinars and we attracted order, over 40,000 registrations uh, from small businesses over the course of the series so far. Uh, uh, 15,000 small businesses participated in at least one webinar. And what we did is we brought experts in to talk to small businesses about relevant topics, like how you manage payroll in a, in a pandemic. I mean, like really important uh, blocking and tackling topics. And here's the thing, Dave, we didn't do any nurturing um, of the actual attendees. So typically when you see a sales webinar, you attend and I'm gonna market the heck out of you after. This was all in the name mm -hmm. of High tide floats all boats. Let's go out there and do something we can help. So it's just, it's just an example of, of what uh, Mark's talking about that I think really hits home. To your other question, though, um, we, we do. Um, we think that um, there, there's really five things that um, small businesses are going to be expecting of us, and, and we're ready to, to step in and as marketers start you know, beginning to deliver on these things right away. I'm gonna, you mentioned TJ Fox earlier, so I'm going to take one of his lines. TJ always talks about how 5G is the democratization of technology. Now, I don't know if he actually wrote mm -hmm. that, but first time I ever heard it was TJ Fox. So I'll just say mm -hmm. that for the record. And when you, think about, when you think about 5G and small businesses, and then you factor in that we're in an environment now where operation, operational budgets are gonna be down year over year, um, access capital and access to cash to build to, to build huge digital transformation infrastructure changes. It's just not going to happen in the short term. So when you think about a transformative technology like 5G, this is an opportunity to move your business into digital transformation and to do it in a very, very efficient use of the dollars that you spend. Um, it, it's something as easy as maybe I'm not going to do, maybe I'm going to do PC replacement. And instead of upgrading my computers or laptops, I'm going to invest in mobile devices, 5G mobile devices and 5G solutions. So the five things that we're keeping an eye on though as marketers come down to this. With an eye on, to the, on the great democratization of technology here. One, from all, we know this, in moments of crisis, there's always opportunities. So while there's businesses that are for sure worrying about their survival, there's also new businesses popping up at a very, very strong growth rate overall. Uh, the US Census Bureau put a report out in August of 2020 and mentioned and was able to cite that registrations for new businesses are up. And what they're, and these businesses are filling the gap uh, for um, potential parts of the, of the horizontal channels that maybe went out of business or are struggling to meet the demand. So you have these new opportunities. So we need to keep an eye on one, 
how are we helping our businesses, our existing business customers, continue to grow of themselves out of the pandemic impact, but also understand that there's new opportunity in the market and we need to be um, keeping an eye on these new trends and emerging opportunities. Um, number two, digital transformation. You've heard me say it over and over again, but um, we did a survey in September uh, of small businesses and 45% of small business owners want to pivot through digital transformation. As, as hard as this may be to believe, uh, if you think about something as a basic e-commerce uh, platform, there are many, many businesses that didn't have that. And we need to be able to help them build their business model around uh, digital transformation, specifically e-commerce. Uh, the third thing that we're really keeping an eye on as an emerging trend is minority-owned small businesses were disproportionately uh, hit hard. Um, uh, by pandemic and surrounding events. So we also have really needed to make sure that as, as marketers, we're paying attention to the, the, the micro segment of small businesses that may need additional help. So we're already thinking about additional grant programs and other ways to drive direct investment into these uh, minority owned small businesses. The, uh, the fourth thing is, uh, around um, what we need to do to uh, outrun and navigate the outbreak. Uh, half of small business owners and decision makers say um, the resources currently available to help uh, navigate the outbreak have been useful to them. So things like the webinars that I just mentioned earlier, we've got to continue to put thought leadership, lead in thought leadership in meaningful ways and continue to introduce new topics and new ways of thinking and ways of working as Mark mentioned into the business. And then lastly, as marketers, we really have to remember, we have to continue to remember that I can't just go back into a sell mode as a marketer. We need to balance serve and sell. So making sure that we understand there's a trade-off between the deep impacts that we can make as marketers, but also the scalability of the things that we want to touch. We're not going to be able to be all things to everybody, but we are going to be majoring in the majors, those majors being direct line of sight to how we can help your small business with digital transformation and how we can deliver to you the solutions that you're gonna to need to see your way through the pandemic, whether you're an existing customer looking to survive or whether you're a new startup and we're looking to uh, um, create a new opportunity in the marketplace. So listen, man, you just wrote a manifesto um, that frankly in, in its five parts could be um, uh, shared with virtually everybody in the B to SMB space. And I hope you do it. I hope you post what you just articulated on LinkedIn and any other place um, to share with your, your peer marketers in B to SMB. Because I think that, that many of the thing you t things you touched on are, it's not that they aren't obvious. It's not that SMBs aren't, you know, transmitting all of those five component parts, but I think it really forms the the basis of a plan to move forward. And answered the question that I had of you is, what are the demands now on you as this whole thing has taken shape? So really, really well articulated. Um, Mark, you spent a lot of your time training the salespeople. Um, are they prepared to, frankly, follow through on these five component parts to really assist small businesses on what is clear the demands really are? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt, right? Are we there yet, Dave? No, we have some work to do there because this has been a monumental shift from the top down on how we look at this. I say a shift, really not a shift. It's probably more of providing clarity from the top down on how. I think it's our responsibility from a field perspective to make sure that we have the enablement actions in place for the sales reps to be able to do so, right? So it can't just be packages. It can't just be marketing. It has to be Conversations with your customers need to look a bit different as well. Uh, one, you know, a couple of examples of this, Dave. So if I go into the SMB space, just use um, small retail as an example, their business has shifted drastically. So that conversation that I'm having is no longer centered around what we call core connectivity. So, hey, smartphones, tablets. Now it's shifting into, okay, so how are you really thinking about your evolution of your point of sale system and a 5G environment? How does that interact with the rest of your unified communication collaboration opportunities that you have out there. So it's making sure that the reps are having those conversations now and that us as field marketers are helping to enable those conversations with either it be material, um, scripting, 
making sure that our products are baked the right way around simplicity. This can get to be uh, complicated for a small medium business, right? We know that if you if you ask a, a certain small business owners, you know, what are you doing from a backup connectivity standpoint? That that's a very overwhelming conversation to a lot of folks. Their core business is not what our core business is. We have to make sure that we're simplifying that and making it easy for them to procure these services and um, also keep these services up and running in an efficient manner. So do you find um, yourself, do your reps find basically, um, as uh, many in the BDSMB space are finding in engaging their small business, the small business are actually asking you to be probably more prescriptive than you've ever been? In other words, yeah. don't tell me it's a good idea. Tell me exactly how to do it. Tell me how to do it. And then don't just tell me how to do it. If I do decide to move forward, I want to know how you can help support me as we go on this journey together. So it's it's not a it's not a one time procurement. It's a relationship now more than ever. And uh, we've uh, we've actually brought in some additional support mechanisms to be able to support our customers through these times through some of our partners. So if you think about um, if you do purchase one of these uh, we'll call complicated packages, and they're really not complicated, but it can be perceived that way. Um, we're actually going to help you along that journey moving forward. And it's not just, hey, here's how you implement, um, but it's also here's how you implement and sustain. And by the way, here's the number you call. Here's the person you talk to. And I'm still available as well. Right. So it's making sure that they're super comfortable with what they're implementing and then how it's supported long term and quite frankly how they can monetize it uh, and help their business in this new environment you know dave dave if i can comment on that um it's a great point mark uh and you know if you go mark will remember this if you go pre-pandemic uh mark and i were in marketing planning sessions thinking how are we going to build a meaningful digital transformation campaign that uh, that motivates businesses to to move their tech stack, and we, it, it was a very complex way of uh, of marketing. And we, and what the pandemic has done is it's done more in six months to move the ball on digital transformation than any marketing campaign. No offense, Mark, that you and I could have ever come up with. Uh, <laughs> I think it's something having to do with the mother of necessity, right? So um, there's no question it's there. But I think the other point is that, and Mark, you're making a great point, that this isn't a one and done for us. Um, you know, you heard me a little earlier in the session talk about our four stakeholders as a company and, and the four stakeholder being society. Um, our, uh, our chairman uh, announced a commitment um, a few months back um, in, uh, called Citizen Verizon. And Citizen Verizon is a lot of things. Uh, you can uh, go to Verizon dot com and uh, look up Citizen Verizon, you can see the platform. But one of the commitments in Citizen Verizon is a commitment to small businesses. And our commitment is by 2030, Verizon will provide 1 million small businesses with resources to help them thrive in the digital economy. That's us putting literally our money where our mouth is with this 1 million business commitment. And what and Dave, what, what I'd like um, the viewers to hear about that is, we're not just doing this to get through pandemic. We're making a commitment through 2030, knowing that, hey, regardless of what economists you listen to, I don't know if this is gonna be a V shape, a U shape, a K shape. I don't know what the recovery is gonna be, but I'll tell you this much. We're committed through 2030 to make sure that we're delivering to our small businesses the help they need. Yeah, I think it's gonna look more like a Chinese alphabet character, right? It's <laughs> this recovery, it's not. Yeah. It's nothing in our language. That's, yeah. that is, I didn't, you know, again, I didn't know about Citizen Verizon. That sounds like an incredibly great and strong commitment. I, I guess I'd like to kind of close by asking you guys, because we've really done a great job of understanding why you would be nominated as a brand of the year in, in 2020, but you're also nominated for the Hall of Fame. And you guys have been there long enough to kind of, um, uh, know the DNA of your organization. What's the, and I'd like both of you to answer this, what's the DNA of Verizon that, that you've come to know and love? Yeah, hey, Mark, I can jump in right away on that one. Uh, for, for me, it's right in our credo, uh, right at the top, it says customers first. Uh, when, when you start, I started with the company, Mark, you started the company, the very first thing you learn and you hear leaders talking about is customers first. Uh, I can remember being in a meeting where our CEO, he, uh, he had uh, another executive on stage with him. And this is when I was brand new in the company. 
and uh, they were they were delivering a town hall session internally. And our CEO, uh, he looked at this executive. He said, "Hey, I have a multiple choice question for you. Um, if you receive three phone calls simultaneously, and one is from me, one is from one of your employees, and one is from your customer, what call do you take?" And the, <laughs> and, and the, right, right. And it, that could be a trick question, right? But guess what? <laughs> it wasn't a trick question because everyone knew the answer is you take the customer call. We, we, we are here to make sure that we're putting our customers first each and every time. And look, uh, I, I'm not, um, uh, I'm aware that as you look at all these mission statements out there with all of our great competitors, everyone's talking about the customer. But every single day to live the DNA of putting customers first, for, for me, it's, it's a real obvious reason why we're able to show up when we need to show up. And we're always right there listening to what the customers are saying. Um, as a marketing organization, but the worst thing that can happen, and what I, what I, uh, Mark will tell you, what we worry about most is ever showing up tone deaf. I mean, I can have the most beautiful creative, I can have a great commercial, but if we're tone deaf, where a small business is watching our ad thinking, what are these guys talking about? We mm-hmm. failed as a marketing organization. And if we put our customers first, we feel pretty confident that we're gonna be able to deliver uh, on target messaging and do it in a way that, uh, that makes sure that customers realize that we get it. Another great answer. Mark, how about you? I mean, I, I'm sure you won't disagree with Keith, but is there anything that you would add in your years of experience of, of what yeah. you think of when you think of Verizon DNA? I think I think it's been a progression to Keith's point, right? So I, I'm more proud to work here now than I ever have been. And, and I see the organization holistically practicing what I'll call active empathy, especially in today's time where you're literally trying to put yourself in other other people's shoes, whether it's our customers' shoes, our employees' shoes, trying to finish their sentences before they do. And I think if you if you subscribe to that mindset, um, you will always put the customer and the employee first. And you know, first thing you should ask, or the first thing that we tr- listen, we're not perfect at this, Dave. But the first thing that we try to ask ourselves as we go through any initiative or any program is, what are our customers saying? Does anybody have any exact feedback? And oh, by the way, has anyone talked to a frontline rep who interacts with these customers every single day to get their feedback? Right. We make sure that as we do this program and as we wire this program, that it's being done with their best interests in mind from an empathetic point of view. So, and that's the only thing that I'll add. I think Keith hit the nail on the head that we, we obsess over this. You know, more than any company I've ever worked for or worked with, I truly say that it is uh, it's at the top of the list. Everything that we do, Dave. Um, again, congratulations, guys, and I think that you've articulated so well, you know, why? Why are you nominated for this? And you've provided, uh, Keith, I'm serious, man, it's a, it's a manifesto slash playbook that you laid out um, that I think are incredibly, the five components are incredibly applicable to many in the business to small business space. And, you know, all of us are trying to figure out how to complete the plan going forward, recognizing through our own lenses, you know, what are the areas of emphasis? What are the areas of deficit? What are the areas of, you know, we, we can do this, or this is gonna take a lot of work on our part to do, but I think those those five component parts are, are, are super critical. Um, guys, thank you so much for doing this. Much appreciated. Um, valuable, very valuable to your peers and your audience. Congrats again, and uh, we'll see you Thursday night for the award show. See how you, how you guys uh, net out, but much appreciated. Dave, thank you. Dave, thanks for having us.